Hello guys, Crispy here, welcome back to another video in this part, my friends, I'm gonna be testing The Last of Us Part 1 in its minimum and recommended PC requirements. So we're here in The Last of Us Part 1's Steam page and scrolling down to the system requirements reveals our minimum and recommended requirements. Let's go over the minimum first, it asks for the AMD Ryzen 5 1500X or an Intel Core i7 4770K. I am running the i7 in this video and it's gonna be very interesting to see see how it performs because this game is actually pretty CPU intensive in some areas and the i7 is 11 years old at this point. Next up we got the memory, it asks for 16 gigabytes of RAM, we're running that in dual channel, 1600 megahertz, I could overclock it but that's the norm for DDR3. And lastly for the graphics cards they list quite a few of them right here, the RX 470, RX 6500 XT, GTX 970, all of these three are roughly in the same performance category but then they list the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti and uh, that's a lot slower than all of the previously mentioned GPUs so of course I chose that one. <laughs> you know what guys I'm also going to try the GTX 970 because uh, spoiler alert the 1050 Ti is, is pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the recommended requirements. They ask for an AMD Ryzen 5 3600X or a Core i7 8700 and I got the Ryzen 5 3600X right here and we're gonna pair that Ryzen 5 with 16 gigabytes of RAM as asked for the recommended requirements. It's the same on the recommended and the minimum. And finally before we move to the gameplay section of this video we got the recommended graphics cards. They ask for the RX 5700 XT, RX 6600 XT, RTX 2070 Super and the RTX 3060 8 gigabyte version which is much slower than the 12 gigabyte version by the way. Out of these four GPUs I chose to go with the Radeon RX 6600 XT, this one is the AFOX version of the card, it's one of the cheapest models in contrast to the GTX 1050 Ti that we're using you know. Now let's get to the gameplay! Shall we? Okay guys, I've put together the minimum requirement system now. You can see all of the specs right here on screen. And let's go and play the game now. So before I go into the settings, I just want you to take a look at the graphics and uh, type down in the comments what you think we're using in terms of graphical quality and resolution. Um, it's getting like 30s, 40s. That's not terrible. It's actually pretty playable. It's not stuttering at all, which is pretty impressive, especially given how poorly optimized this game came out, right? Now it's actually very playable, at least so far in this little section, but it's about to get real, my friend. <laughs> it's usually way more intensive in this little area and, ooh, okay. Well, it does dip into the 20s. So do you have an idea already of what kind of settings we're using? That flickering on the fence though, that's so terrible. Anyway, <laughs> let's go over the settings now. I am playing at 720p resolution everything is turned off right here and we're using the very low settings preset which is basically lowest settings possible in this game you can't really lower anything else aside from resolution scaling which apparently we will need to do because yeah 20 fps is is not great obviously <laughs> you don't want to play this game with drops into the mid 20s even though most of the time it will probably stay above 30 fps it's not a, a good experience whatsoever, okay? okay? Just if you can't get 30 locked, don't bother, all right? Because there are quite a few areas in this game, I have played all of it uh, while benchmarking, by the way, where it's gonna drop a little bit more than what we see here in this particular section. It's not looking great, although in terms of graphical fidelity, it still looks okay. <laughs> it's minimum settings, but I, I could deal with it, you know? But let's try it with some FSR2 set to the quality setting here. This renders the game at 67% resolution scale and adds a little bit of sharpening as well and upscales the image basically. And it still looks pretty decent. I am using a 27 inch monitor for this. So a smaller monitor will definitely look playable and less noisy, although there is quite a a ton of noise right now on the image especially while moving around Joel right there yeah it, it's it's really bad looking <laughs> and distracting but 
I mean, now we, we got the game to be playable. It still drops, seriously. <laughs> On a CPU side of things, I'm very impressed that it's hovering around 50 to 60% usage most of the time. While loading, it goes up to 100% and it takes like a minute or so to load into the game, if you have an SSD, of course. Um, and for the first few seconds of the game itself, it will always be at 100% CPU usage, but then it flattens out and we're getting 70% right now, which is pretty decent. 16 gigs is also enough, as they said it would be, of course. It's even the recommended spec, you know. It's using about 12 and a half gigabytes of RAM. And this is slow 1600 megahertz RAM as well. And uh, it's not a problem, apparently. The GPU is the main issue right here. By the way, over here, it's usually pretty intensive as well. It's not really dropping, though. Okay. Anyway, I could see how some people would call this playable because it doesn't really stutter too much. Frame time consistency is not really that great right now, but it's it doesn't feel bad, you know? It's just that the frame rate is very low and it will dip into the 20s, like over here, for example, as well. Um, so I wouldn't do that, okay? You can also overclock the card and the CPU a little bit. CPU doesn't really need that if all you want is 30 FPS, of course. GPU, however, yeah, a little bit of an OC would definitely put it above the 30 FPS. FPS mark very often or like 99% of the time probably. Uh, come on, come on, God, die you bastards, die, come on. All right, there we go, look at that. We made it, guys. I would say the other GPUs from the minimum requirement are accurate. 1050 Ti shouldn't really be there. I'm not sure why they put it there. Let's overclock the GTX 1050 Ti a little bit, all right? 250 megahertz on the memory clock and 150 megahertz on the core clock. I'm not even gonna push the power limit because a lot of the GTX 1050 Ti models don't allow you to do that, but these overclock settings should be very attainable with any GTX 1050 Ti. And that boosts us up from 28 FPS, which was what we were seeing in this scene right here, to 31. So it's not even a 10% increase, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a 5, maybe a 7% increase in frame rate, which means that, uh, yeah, it's gonna be slightly smoother, it's gonna dip less from 30 FPS, but it's still gonna dip here and there, as we saw already. You know what, guys? I thought it was gonna be a little bit better of an experience with the 1050 Ti, and it was quite disappointing. So I'm gonna try the GTX 970, which is the older of the bunch in terms of minimum requirements GPUs, and again, way faster than 1050 Ti, and let's see if that's more adequate, or accurate. Okay guys, I just installed the GTX 970 now, you can see it right here, latest drivers as well, and using the same minimum specs of course over here. Going over the settings, I'm setting it to 720p resolution without any upscaling, so no FSR2 right now, and the same very low settings that we utilized with the 1050 Ti, and if you remember the 1050 Ti right here was getting around like 26 FPS, it was dipping from 30 this one is getting 30 fps flat so it's gonna be a much better experience you can actually get 30 plus fps or at least like 29 plus fps all of the time throughout the gameplay in this game no need to utilize fsr either and uh yeah we're reaching like 40 fps around here so it is indeed quite a bit of a better experience it makes a difference playing at native resolution compared to playing with fsr 2 turned on at this low res you know uh, uh, but uh, the difference is not as big as I expected. That's what she said. Let's play through the rest of this little benchmark run that I got, reaching 60 FPS sometimes, and like peak FPS basically, maximum frames. Over here, it still drops. Okay, 28, 29. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, 1050 Ti was using FSR2 to get around these FPS. This one is native resolution. If I used FSR2, it would be even better. Dripping down into the 30s. Dripping. Dropping. <laughs> down. I mean, we can say dripping, right? Eh, it's okay. <laughs> let's go. Let's continue. Uh, let me kill one of these guys. Come on. There we go. 
pretty hard to to aim in this game actually also as i told you this gpu is usually around like 50 60 70 percent faster sometimes even more uh, at times than the gtx 1050 ti but maybe that's only in older directx 11 titles in these newer ones maybe it's just the drivers being not as well optimized with the 900 series of course in the 10 series um but yeah the 970 is performing well under expectations here, in my opinion, guys. I thought it was going to be much better. Anyways, even though it's older, it is a better fit for minimum requirements than the GTX 1050 Ti, right? Because even here, it dipped to 29 already, but now it's actually stable above 30. I'd still not consider this a minimum requirements GPU, unless they're really aiming for that 30 FPS experience at 720 again. But it's definitely a better fit than the little 10. 50 Ti. I could play like this, it's just not ideal. It's time for the recommended requirements. Let's put it to the test, shall we? All right, guys, I got the recommended requirements put together right here with the latest AMD drivers, of course. You can see in Tech Power Up GPU Z that Resizable Bar is also enabled. I actually updated the BIOS for this video. And over in Task Manager, there's the CPU, there's the RAM. And uh, you know what's very interesting about this, guys? Sometimes we get 69 FPS here in the menu, which is amazing. <laughs> So that tells me that they nailed the recommended requirements, okay? Uh, anyways, we're playing at 1080p resolution this time around with no upscaling and we're using the auto settings, which is basically high settings preset with ultra texture quality, uh, aside from this one right here. Now, this is pretty insane because when this game came out, you couldn't run high textures on 8GB GPUs without you being completely VRAM limited, but it's not the case anymore they finally optimized it and here we have it guys oh that is smooth <laughs> oh my goodness especially after seeing the minimum requirement system this feels amazing with 60 plus oh yes it's probably gonna dip into the 50s but i mean this is already a win it's really smooth on recommended requirements guys also that cpu utilization is extremely high maybe i should have waited a little bit like i did with the i7 system because that also was pegged at 100 percent usage and then it came down a little bit but we're not really cpu bound and uh, well at least now you know that you won't reach the limits of the 3600x here uh, we're seeing fps dropping into the 50s slightly as you can see this is one of the most intensive areas in the game as i told you probably in this video not sure but it is <laughs> okay but at least most of the time it is actually above 60 fps as the averages suggest of course so it is a great experience and of course if you have an overclocked version of the 6600 xt it will run even better it will dip less into the 50s basically also guys there is still fsr support in this game if you require even higher FPS. Obviously at 1080p resolution quality FSR is not really the prettiest stuff around, you know, so I think I would stick with these settings that we're utilizing at the moment. These feel smooth enough for the type of game that this is and uh, yeah it doesn't really stutter or whatever it only dips down into the lower 50s at the most intensive areas and i think that's really decent uh, for oh god damn it okay there we go <laughs> uh, for the recommended requirements you know this is basically spot on i would say vram usage as you can see is very high <laughs> but it's not really spilling into the ram i think so all good in that regard it's also on point yeah i guess they fixed all of the vram problems that this game had come over here boy there we go kill these bastards come on okay okay <laughs> the sound they make okay let's go outside now yeah 66 fps average in this scene that's pretty good actually guys looking in this direction holy crap that is a big drop in performance Damn, okay, <laughs> so it does dip down into the 40s, unfortunately, guys. It's not really as smooth as I thought it would be, but again, it's definitely very acceptable for recommended requirements, so at least they nailed it here, okay? Minimum requirements were pretty rough, 
uh, but the recommended ones are pretty good. So let's stop it right there. If you are interested in FSR performance here in the most intensive area, I'm going to enable it right now. But keep in mind that FSR 3 is going to be implemented in this game soon. I don't know when soon is, so I'm still making this video. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you are interested in that, I will likely revisit some GPUs here in Last of Us Part 1 with FSR 3 and frame generation. Now. FSR 2 doesn't seem to be improving our FPS by too much here, as you can see, we're still below 60 frames. CPU usage is so damn high, dude. How crazy is that? A am I doing something in the background? <laughs> Wait a second. I am not, as you can see, like, it's it's just the game. I guess if you throw cores and threads at it, it will eat a lot of CPU. Look at that. 90%, 90 plus percent. Holy, that's insane. Now, I kind of want to try it with the medium settings preset next. Okay, I'll need to restart the game to fully apply that uh, or, or not, <laughs> but I'm gonna do it anyways, guys. Here we have it. Instead of getting like 60s, we're now up into the 70s, the 80s, possibly touching 90s. Yep, there we go. I'm gonna start counting the FPS as well. So I guess if you want 60 plus FPS all of the time, this might actually be it, guys. Let's see. Looking in this direction it dips down into the mid and low 60s but it's not dipping from 60 yet oh boy it actually touched 60 fps there <laughs> i'm also impressed that the 3600 x is doing such a good job once again it's definitely capable of achieving 60 plus fps if you have the required gpu power to do so i mean when the game came out it was such a disappointment in terms of optimization but now looking back at it having played a ton of more recent titles you know that have come out throughout the last year and this year as well and of course with all of the optimizations that the developers have made here in the last of us part one it's run so much better it actually looks like an optimized title now guys okay <laughs> um, and the performance quite good one percent lows are pretty low there i'm not sure what that's about uh, it's probably because of a little fluctuation there in the frame time graph, but it's not really stuttery, aside from when you go into a cutscene like this, for example. Oh boy, 64. Yeah, it, it shouldn't really drop from 60, right? Maybe it will by the end of the benchmark run, but uh, yeah, over here as well, getting 64. Nah, it feels way smoother actually than high settings. However, we lose quite a bit on the texture quality and there was a little bit of a stutter there. Ooh, look at the GPU utilization, by the way, guys. Okay, so now that we're seeing these guys on screen, it's probably taxing the CPU a lot more, of course. Um, so it is ending up in a CPU bound scenario. Wow, 90 plus percent CPU usage and 80 to 90 percent GPU usage. Interesting, but again, uh, it's still above 60 FPS, so the 3600X is definitely spot on. Holy crap, what the hell happened? <laughs> probably loading this next area or whatever, but that doesn't usually happen. It was probably a one-off. Um, but yeah, the 3600X does a pretty great job uh, as a recommended requirements CPU. They actually nailed it, as well as the 6600XT once again. Uh, outside, still 60 plus on medium settings. Okay, finally, it's dipping down into the 50s, but it's basically only gonna dip down into the 50s in worst case scenario. So that's been it for this one, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this look at The Last of Us. And keep in mind, this was tested with FSR 2 and FSR 3 is coming soon, but that will only add frame generation anyways. Like if you enable FSR 3 without FG, you should be seeing around the same FPS as FSR 2 um, without FG because it doesn't support FG. So there is that. Look at that, 69 FPS by the end of it on average. <laughs> It is beautiful. <laughs> Catch you in the next one. Love you all. Bye-bye.